and welcome to Basketball Talk Pro. I'm Ron Ecker. Of course, the first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, the interview uh, with Coach Jackson. Uh, we actually did the interview, uh, and it went very well. He was terrific. Uh, and the material that he covered uh, is something that you really um, uh, need to get because it, it was very special. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we had problems with the internet. Uh, and even though Coach Jackson went on and did the best he could, um, when we reviewed it, uh, it just wasn't a quality uh, that uh, we would want to put on. Uh, and so, uh, because it, it, the picture was wavery, uh, the voice got blanked out. Uh, we, we're just having some uh, problems and uh, uh, you know it's it, it's really uh, I'm not a, uh, uh, a you know I'm not trained in this thing uh, and so I was a little bit unprepared for that. I, I, it just it never happened um, but um, at any rate uh, his, his response afterwards was that we to try to set up a time to do it uh, over again. And in the meantime, I'm going to do everything I can uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, because the material that he covered uh, was so, uh, I mean, he, he, I'm sure he can do it again. Um, but it was, it was perfect for uh, this uh, type of what we're doing here, a uh, form of coach coach's training is really what this is uh, about and uh, has been about ever since we started the very first uh, session and we're now I think uh, in our 60s or close to it uh, so a lot of we've gone through a lot of things uh, so I'll, I'll keep you posted on that but it will not be this Saturday like we uh, had planned. Uh, and so um, one other thing I want to talk about is uh, the people that went to the webinar and, and we really have had a lot of re, uh, strong response on that webinar. Uh, uh, those people that registered, uh, I will be sending material to and I'm, I'm a little late on that because uh, the, the weather here in, in the Cleveland area was just so severe that it slowed things down a lot and also I was putting a lot of time into preparing for uh, Phil's uh, uh, segment and uh, on top of that my computer broke down so <coughs> there was a lot of uh, things that happened uh, that I couldn't get it out uh, in the time that I thought. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and now I want to talk about uh, the deflection uh, study that we did and I was really pleased with how it uh, you know it came out excuse me a minute <clears throat> we ended up with uh, 16 games and uh, which really were 32 teams uh, then so it was um, came out very good um, and I, I think that uh, out of it is something that you need to give some strong consideration to. Uh, it's um, uh, deflections, uh, and, and I'm going to show you the, the uh, form and the results uh, here in just a few minutes, uh, but uh, deflections have a, a major part uh, in your games. Uh, and I, I've come to the conclusion that um, we need to uh, uh, identify that in our coaching uh, philosophy, uh, our coaching uh, practices, uh, games, uh, because I think it has um, a, real, a, a real lesson to learn. So and what I'm going to go do, what I want to do now is to go to that uh, form and show you exactly uh, what we're talking about. Uh, this is a chart we took from uh, all of the contributions from coaches uh, that they sent in to me. And uh, I'd just like to 
uh, explain it and show you the important parts. Now, it's a little bit difficult to see up here because it, of the way that it was uh, cut off. Um, but uh, this is, says Team A, Team B. This is deflections for Team A. This is deflections for Team B. This is steals for Team A. And this is steals for Team B. So, Wisconsin had eight deflections and three steals. Michigan had five deflect deflections for three steals. And so on down the, the whole list here. Now, we're pretty well represented. Uh, we have uh, NBA games, WNBA game, uh, high-level uh, colleges, lower-level colleges, and high schools. Uh, so it gives us a, a, a pretty good look uh, through this. And uh, we have to remember, when you have multiple people uh, taking statistics, there is some error there that you have to deal with. Uh, but in this case, what we were trying to do was get uh, coaches who wanted to take part, and I'm glad for every one of them, although there wasn't enough. There should have been many more that were doing this. Uh, the experience of pursuing a uh, theory uh, that uh, can be helpful to you. And that theory was we started out with how effective are uh, deflections in resulting in steals from those uh, deflections. And we're going to see uh, here. Uh, but when you have multiple people uh, doing um, a uh, uh, to keeping track of things like this, uh, you have, uh, you know, you, you have a bias and, and I guess the best term is uh, concentration. Uh, some will concentrate more while they're watching a the game than, than others. Uh, and everyone has their personal biases. And when you take statistics, uh, because it's so important to be accurate, uh, you have to do away with those two uh, problems. You have to concentrate. So you get every deflection, exactly what it is. And you have to do away with your biases. Uh, don't predetermine what you think will happen. Uh, see it and then track the results. Something uh, when you, a lot of you will be assigning people to do this, to do a study like this. Make sure you make that point clear to them. Then you'll have a better result. Well, it was kind of an uh, uh, an eye opener to me a little bit, uh, more so than I, I thought. Uh, let's look at the totals now. Uh, team A's, all these guys on this side, uh, there was no um, determination which team was A or B, but just kind of the, uh, the way we wrote them down. Uh, but team A uh, had 161 deflections between uh, those, uh, you know, those 16 teams, they averaged then 10.06 deflections a game. Uh, team B was a little bit less, and I don't know the reason for that. It could be anything. Uh, but they only had 125 deflections in 16 games. Their average here was 7.81. Uh, and on this side, uh, the steals, Team A had 68 uh, steals, which averaged over those 16 games uh, 4.25 uh, deflections per game. And, a, and this, I mean, steals per game. And Team B had 57, and they averaged 3.56 uh, steals per game. Uh, over here are the totals of the two teams. There were 286 uh, deflections uh, in, in the study that we ran, uh, resulting in 125 steals. 
Now, th this next number I put in red for a reason. I, I, I think that's a key number. Uh, and it ties into this number, which I think is a real key number. What I'm saying here is how many deflections does it take to get one steal? It comes out to 2.27, which is about two and a quarter, approximately two uh, deflections are going to result in a steal. Uh, this is really, to me, uh, a very key key numbers. I didn't. I knew that deflections caused a lot of steals. I didn't know that it would come out uh, at this this high. Uh, so, in other words. Uh, to give you an idea, I just put this down here. Ten deflections will result usually in four steals. Now, in my mind, coaches, uh, th this is something you got to put into your, your thinking. Um, when my assistant, former assistant, and the guy that played for me as well, uh, who is, is, does tremendous work in this area and helped me a lot, um, brought this up. Uh, he mentioned to me that he said, you know, you always put a lot of emphasis on having active hands. And I, and I did do that and still do. But um, it was for a little bit different reason. I, 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 I realized that we were getting deflections off of it. But um, my real purpose in having active hands was for a, a little different purpose. Uh, I felt that, uh, and, and I still do, um, that um, active hands helped us defend two critical areas that were difficult to defend. And one was the, the direct pass to the post up, direct pass to a cutter. Um, both of them are, are very difficult to defend. Uh, it's difficult to get on the right side and stay there and uh, both create, um, to me, uh, tremendous uh, defensive problems. But if a guy has active hands and works very hard at it, uh, what he creates is a, either a slow bounce pass or a, a, a slow kind of lob pass, medium level lob pass. If they can't throw a direct quick pass, uh, that little difference makes a lot of difference to that defensive player. And you take the post up, I don't care where you put your defensive man, you have a, a deficiency, uh, uh, especially when they're in that low post. Uh, if you, whatever side you play on, if you're playing on the side, the other side is a vulnerable. Uh, if you play behind, you're just letting a guy catch the ball. Uh, now, sometimes you can get by with that if you got the right kind of postman, and uh, you, you might get by with that. But more than likely, that's going to uh, create a problem for you. If they can get it in. If you were, you get let Shaq, for example, when he played, catch the ball in there, uh, I mean you're you're in, in a lot of trouble. Uh, and if you front, then they're vulnerable uh, for the law pass, but they're vulnerable for something else. Fronting uh, takes you out of the help position. It takes you out of a rebounding position. I never cared for that. Um, there's times you have to front. I front uh, everybody in the paint um, because now you've cut down the distance that they can lob. And, uh, and and you're not in that bad position to rebound because you're in the paint. Uh, so those were my reasons. But because I have such a love for steals uh, defensively and offensively, because it is the best way to get the ball is from steals, um, it, it, it takes on another coaching situation for me and I think for you to work on that with players. Now I do, uh, but uh, now my thinking is a little bit more towards, it's twofold, helping the cutter and the post-up defender and providing us with 
of potential steals, which provide us with the best way to get the ball uh, in a change of possessions. Uh, so a lot came out of this, and I'm hopeful that all of you will take a long look at this um, because uh, this is how you learn. Now, now you, when you tell your players to keep their hands active, you've got something to tell players. Every time we deflect the ball, if we get every two to two to two and a half times we deflect the ball, we're going to get a steal. Uh, and uh, and I always have told our players the importance of helping the defender on the cutter and the defender uh, on the post up uh, player. Uh, so this is a has been a very good learning experience. As I told you, you know, I think I've been uh, involved in coaching and basketball for almost 50 years uh, and so you always learn something uh, I gained something from uh, the people that helped me here and uh, I hope you did too uh, because uh, this is something you can go to the bank with and this is also something you can win with uh, so uh, I, I thank the, uh, the people that helped me uh, with this, I wish more would have, and I think every one of you listening to this should start doing, uh, get the form, you know, I'll send you the form, uh, and go to work, and, and uh, uh, assign somebody, you know, even high school coaches, there's always got uh, uh, high school kids that can do this kind of work and help you. You don't have to give it to an assistant or give it to a uh, give it to a uh, player on the bench. I don't like that. Don't ever do that. That's humiliating to the player. Um, and and uh, take this information seriously. Uh, this is what coaching is about. Um, and so uh, I'll drop the I'll drop the uh, form now, and uh, we'll finish up. Well, I think you can see from that uh, uh, form and discussion that we had over the form uh, that uh, deflections have, have uh, on your defense have a, a pretty major role. And when they result in steals, steals are the best way offensively to get the ball. Uh, our studies have shown that when you get the ball to uh, from a steal, uh, you're almost going to score one point for every every steal you get, which is the highest rating of anything uh, that we're doing. Higher than plays and everything. Uh, you're much better off getting it uh, from the situation uh, such as a steal. Uh, so that. Uh, I think uh, we covered it pretty well uh, with the form, and I don't have much more to say about it, but I think two things are, are important. One is we found out something. We worked together, the guys that uh, were helpful uh, in doing some games for us. Uh, I think more of you should be involved in something like that. Uh, it, it's um, helpful to you. Um, you can't can't really learn things without doing some work and uh, don't ever think you you know put anything uh, away or don't think it's important because it might be very important uh, to you so that's it for this time and uh, we'll have another one in a couple days and uh, we'll work hard uh, to try to get um, uh, coach Jackson uh, back uh, back on for you. Thank you.